All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, we'll start the uh, speakers part of the meeting. Um, the speaker is uh, Demetrius Palianis, NE1D. Um, he will talk about the use of parks on the air as a way to stay active, along with tips and tricks on how to hunt parks efficiently and develop better operator techniques. Also covered will be activities of the Long Island CW Club, where Demetrius runs a weekly forum on portable operation and teaches a beginner's CW class. Demetrius, take it away. The meeting is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you to uh, for the invitation. Uh, let me see here. Tell me if you guys can see this. And. That always happens. <laughs> we can see it. Okay. Can you see the whole screen now? Yes. All right. Um, so tonight, uh, kind of like what Bruce said, um, uh, 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 actually, let me back step a little bit. Uh, Phil reached out. Um, I think there was... Uh, a Poda soda activator that uh, gave my name to Phil and um, he kindly asked me to come in here and uh, give you a presentation about Poda or uh, um, portable operations. And um, although I have done some, uh, I'm mostly a hunter. So whatever I'm gonna speak today, uh, at least 99% is if you're at home, and you're trying to get uh, parks, what's in it for you, things like that. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I think uh, I became um, um, a ham radio operator in uh, 1990, might have been 1991, somewhere around there. And at the time, uh, there was the five words uh, per minute code requirement. Um, so I'm a code. Uh, uh, licensed him. My first call sign was uh, KA1VQA. It only lasted uh, a couple of weeks, and uh, I um, I up upgraded to uh, a technician at the time. And I held the November one Hotel Tango Bravo until uh, 2018, where um, at that point at that point in time I had uh, passed my extra and. I contemplated and eventually I took the plunge and uh, became uh, uh, NE1D, which is uh, a vanity call sign. Um, a little bit, uh, a few other things is um, uh, my normal work has to do with uh, IT networks and IT information, things like that. So I like uh, tinkering with computers, networks, and electronics. Um, I enjoy uh, volunteering. Um, I have done the Boston Marathon at least 20 times, uh, maybe longer. Um, I have done the toll ships. Uh, that was way back in the 1990s. Um, I am a volunteer examiner, although I haven't uh, done any, uh, I haven't given any examinations in about a couple of years. Um, like I said earlier, I upgraded to extra in 2014 and, uh, between, um, uh, passing my, my technician and, uh, volunteering for road races and things like that. Um, you know, other than talking to repeaters, uh, there was not really a lot of, of activity and because of, uh, school work family, um, for about. 10 or 15, maybe close to 20 years, I was inactive. And then um, around 2014, um, I had bought a new house uh, with a little bit more land that I had at the apartment. So I said to myself, well, I want, why don't you get your extra? And as a result of that, I wanted to become um, uh, active on HF. Prior to that, uh, Day, although I was a general and 
had some uh, HF experience on field days. Um, I, I didn't have a, a station and I wasn't doing really uh, anything on the air. I was pretty much inactive. Uh, but since then, I became what they call a, a paper chaser. Uh, I have a DXCC, uh, WDWAS. I'm working on uh, CW. The only uh, state that I'm missing right now is um, Alaska, uh, not Alaska, uh, Hawaii. Uh, I also love to, um, to chase uh, spatial events like uh, 13 colonies or, uh, you know, the... Uh, ships weekend, whatever special event is out. If uh, if I go on QRZ and they have a good looking QSL, I, I chase it. Same thing with certificates. And then in uh, 2016, I believe, um, the ARRL started at uh, National Parks on the Air, which um, it gave me another reason to chase. <laughs> um, national parks at the time so that's when the addiction uh, got into it so i started with national parks on the air um after after the program was done between 2018 and 2019 actually um, 2017 through 2019 i wasn't really chasing much of uh, parks um you know i wasn't really aware of the parks on the air uh, but once um, in 2018, I became very uh, serious about it. So not only I started chasing um, the POTA stuff, uh, I chased Canadian. The I think the Canadians in 2019, they had something similar uh, with the National Parks on the Air. And uh, I enjoy a little bit of contesting uh, state use of parties. Uh, most of the stuff... I'm not really, the only contest that uh, I guess uh, you could say I go for bragging rights is the Worldwide Reedy concert, uh, Contest. And um, last year, because of work and other things, I wasn't able to do that. But uh, every other contest is mostly uh, to increase my DX account or if I needed a, a state on CW or something, some other award. That's the only reason that I I play around with uh, contesting, but it's uh, another aspect of the hobby that could be fun. And uh, as Bruce mentioned, I'm a member of the Long Island CW Club, uh, also of the Yankee Clipper Club, uh, YCCC, which is a contest club, ARRL, and uh, Bruce, uh, although you may not um, remember that. Uh, I am a member of the uh, Central Massachusetts Amateur Radio Club, and I believe, I'll say at least two years ago, you had given a speech there, and I was in the audience, and we may have exchanged a few words, but uh, it was a while back. So that's um, who I am. So uh, I had to update this. Um, uh, so for my park stats, um, Oops, there's a little echo there. Okay, so if you um, if you can mute, uh, I'll appreciate that. Uh, so for my park stats, um, as it stands right now, I'm over 6,500 uh, unique parks, and I'm in the top 10 um, all-time hunter. I guess in the world for the parks um, uh, parks on the air program um, for Canadian parks on the air I was 14th in the just chasers category uh, 16th all-time leaderboard and 17th in the honor roll I worked about 51.7 parks uh, 76 unique parks 51.7 um, percent of the of all the parks that were activated and I, I have to mention here that that was in the bottom of the cycle and please uh, keep uh, uh, keep those uh, numbers that you see here in mind because a little bit later on uh, everything will come into uh, into play here 
for national parks on the air um i was 357 i've worked 357 unique parks or national parks out of the uh sorry i was number 357 in the all-time list worked 340 uh, national parks or uh, whatever entities they had in that um, program out of uh, 461 that was like 74 uh, percent of all the parks that were activated and i was uh, number eight in massachusetts and missed the uh, missed the honor roll by by a very small number and but uh, the other thing is i had uh, just gotten a new position at my company and uh, i was not able to chase for at least six months so i was able to do that with like about maybe three or four month uh, intensive uh, chasing and uh, last year i i dipped my feet into activating so as it stands right now i have activated 18 unique parks and i have done 36 activations so how does it work for the hunters um well um, um you're in luck because uh, there is not really a lot of work as far as the hunters as, are concerned the only thing you need to know to do is create an account at the parks on the air website which is https uh, app and then once you have uh, that uh, account uh, everything else is done by you the only thing that you need to do is make a QSO give you the RST and your state and you're pretty much done you don't have to submit no logs uh, you don't have to do anything and once the um, activators submit the logs then you start um, you start seeing your results and um, I have a, a picture here from uh, my hunter's log. It's kind of like uh, all the contacts that I've done um, um, since I became active in this um, program. So I, I took that picture around March 2nd or 3rd. So that was the, the last few parks that they have been um, activated. So every time that you see, like you can see this person here, uh, he did, um, he activated on 15 meters, 20, 40 from the same park. Uh, those uh, are considered um, uh, different uh, QSOs and they do count for different types of award. But as far as the park is concerned, you only get credit like uh, the unique parks that number the over 6,500 that I mentioned. You're only gonna get a credit once that you uh, that uh, for the unique award uh, uh, part. Uh, they they have some other awards. So if you if you work like over 20 times uh, a park, uh, you get some awards like that. So they make it uh, um, for people that they like awards. They make it uh, go give uh, QSOs to people, uh, even if you have worked the pay, uh, the same park uh, more than once. So why will you enjoy hunting Poda? Well, uh, at least for me, the number one uh, reason is to stay active. Um, like after the National Parks on the Air, it was uh, done. Uh, I had like uh, big withdrawals. I mean, um, there is a DX contest here and there, but it's not like, uh, at least for the big ones, they're not uh, every weekend and uh you know you don't really have any if they if there is no reason you probably turn off the radio and do something else but uh for me um i use the parks on the air as uh, a way to be active and stay active uh primarily on hf uh, then like i said it requires no log submission so i don't really have to do anything other than uh, uh, talk on the radio and make contacts uh, it's very easy and short contact, like you only give RSD and state uh, for side band, uh, CW, or any other modes. Uh, it makes you a better operator because uh, you keep your skills sharp. You know, sometimes you have to fight through pileups. You, 
you need um, if you're activating a park, uh, you need to know how to handle a pileup. Um, and then you can hunt as much or as little as you want. And um, and you don't really have to to register, right? Some people don't care about a word. So the only reason that you you need to register is if you want to uh, chase those awards and you want to see your uh, your name in the top 10 uh, list or somewhere over there. Other than that, uh, you really don't have to. Then uh, you're reaching, uh, you know, another amateur radio operator reach their goals, which it could be activating a park. So that's a nice gesture. Uh, you know, we are a good community and we help each other. You also uh, help uh, other activators by uh, they have uh, uh, awards uh, when uh, people from different parks uh, get together and they contact each other. So a lot of times, a lot of those guys, they work with uh, not ideal conditions like uh, it could be QRP, uh, antenna might be compromised. So um, sometimes you can say, hey, a park to park is calling you or a QRP station or a YL, or even uh, by going to the website and uh, give them a spot so they can get the 10, uh, uh, the 10 contacts that they need to activate the park. Uh, for me, another thing, uh, everything that I really, really like, uh, I have uh, make it bold in this. You make friends all over the world. Uh, lately, the program is start um, getting um, attention in Europe and uh, South America and Caribbean and Australia, New Zealand. So now I have uh, friends in uh, England and um, uh, Germany and Italy. Actually, some people from Italy, they sent me uh, some pictures um, of the park that they were when they did the contact with me. Uh, you also, you could be on YouTube uh, there. If you go into YouTube to get reviews or uh, find the latest and greatest about him radio, you might see some uh, YouTubers. Uh, they put some of their activations on YouTube and um, you know, if you're very active, you, you could hear yourself um, on YouTube. And the last thing, which is kind of like uh, another thing that I like is uh, for me, it's all about stats and awards. So that's another thing that I like, uh, uh, that I enjoy about uh, hunting. Uh, the top part is what the uh, leaderboards used to look like uh, prior to the latest changes. Um, so you could see my call sign right down here. I don't remember when I took this picture, but I think it was shortly after I made the top 10. And eventually I was able to crack uh, for last year, the top hunters for uh, current year. Well, it was 2021. Uh, um, once you get up here, it's, if, if you're fairly active, it's really hard uh, to get knocked off. Um, as you can see here, that was 4,062 parks and now I'm over 6,500. And this is the bottom part is what it looks today. And I'm right down here, there I'm number six. Uh, this are some of the awards that I have uh, accumulated over the years. Uh, the gold certificate, uh, I believe, is uh, for 30 unique parks. So from the first award is uh, every 10 um, unique parks that you get all the way up to 100. Then from 100, you go every, you know, 200, 300, up to 1,000. Once you reach 1,000, it goes every 500. So the last... Uh, the last one that I just got a few days ago was uh, getting over 6,500. And then if you chase parks uh, that they are after 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, local time, um, you get a late shift. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember how many parks you need to to get this award, uh, but it says here that I have had 100 cues. Now I know it's a lot more than that. And then uh, they have um, each quarter, they have the support your parks weekend where 
as long as you do one contact or you activate a park, you get uh, um, a similar award. And um, and uh, in the summer they have the plaque award, uh, which is uh, they have different categories. Uh, it's kind of like a DX uh, contest type. Uh, um, it's similar to a DX contest where if you get number one in a category, oops, um, you get a plaque. I came close once, but now the the uh, the program is so huge that you need to have a really good station to get awards. And then they give you operator to operator. You need 50 QSOs to uh, to get this award, meaning um, contacts between two amateurs. And the Oasis uh, award there is um, if um, if you do if you hunt a park 20 times you get this award and then uh, you know the more times you hunt it they give you uh, different awards i don't really chase those uh, but i have a friend that he activates the same parks over and over so every time i say hello to him uh, he puts me on the log so i keep accumulating but uh, that's not my intention um you make friends, so uh, this is some of the QSL cards that I've got uh, from uh, different uh, activators. Okay, and for SWS, he's the guy who I just mentioned. He activates uh, three or four different parks. Um, the KK1 TLS, although they lately they have been inactive, uh, when they were living in Florida and they were activating parks, uh, his wife is an artist and. Uh, she will draw the park or whatever she was seeing there and they will give you you know if you make a contact they will give you those uh, qsl cards so i have about 20 or 30 unique um, uh, i guess from uh, somebody coloring uh, from a park uh, qsl cards uh, i you know you can call it as close to a special event as it can get so I like collecting QSL cards in case uh, you haven't noticed that yet. And uh, like I said, you can become famous on YouTube. So here is a couple, uh, a few, uh, few channels that I've been on. Oh, hold on a second. I might need to, I always, that always happens. <laughs> Again, appreciate it. 73. November Echo 1 Delta, over. November Echo 1 Delta, 5-9 into Kilo 3315. 5-9 uh, Massachusetts, Mike, and uh, great videos, <laughs> and uh, happy things. On the air for you. All right, sounds good. 5-9 uh, plus 10 into Massachusetts. Hello from Massachusetts, 73. Uh, 73. QRZ, Victor Echo 3, Bravo, Foxtrot, Canadian National Parks on the air. November Echo 1 Delta 5555. Uh, oh, what's up, Demetrius? Uh, into Kilo 3321. Roger, Roger, Mike. Uh, well, you're booming into Massachusetts right now. 59 plus. So, uh, oh, wow. Echo 1 Delta. November Echo 1 Delta. November Echo 1 Delta. You're 59 into Park 3351. Roger, 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 Roger. 5. Five two Massachusetts. Wisconsin, five and eight in K fourteen seventy seven. Again, 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 again. November Echo One Delta, you are five eight. Five eight in K fourteen seventy seven. K one four seven seven. Oh, five five with a lot of QRM, like a lot of static in the air. Demetrius, you are not going to believe where I am at right now, dude. I am literally on the edge of Lake Erie in a park. Uh, I just had my feet in the water a minute ago. Dude, this video is going to blow your mind. Okay, I guess uh, that's, the, uh, that's the YouTube stuff. Uh, I have been uh, in a lot more uh, videos and uh, now uh, a lot of people that they know me from the different clubs and things that I do, they send me emails. Hey, guess who I've seen on X, Y, and Z. Uh, anyway, my station configuration, uh, I, I don't really, 
uh, it's not a, you know, I don't have towers or power or anything like that. So um, I use uh, a 7300, that's my main radio. I have uh, an off-center dipole with a 22 feet uh, vertical radiator about 70 feet up in the tree somewhere in my backyard. Uh, for CW, I just use a straight key. And I use a, a Windows 10 laptop uh, for logging, digital modes, you know, watching clusters, internet, QRZ and spreadsheets, you know, whatever I need to to be more efficient for uh, uh, chasing parks. So some of the uh, small station hunter challenges, uh, although the bend conditions are getting a little bit better, um, at, at least uh, between 2019 and uh, most recently, uh, the bend conditions were really, really bad. Uh, you uh, lately you get a lot of interference and QRM people just uh, QRMing the activators left and right. Um, sometimes, like I, I typically run about a hundred watts, so sometimes that might not be enough power for the activator to hear you. Um, and you know, if you use wires, most of the time that's a compromise antenna, and you have to experiment with lots of multiple configurations to see what works best for you. You're always competing with big stations, like uh, the ones with a big power and the tower. Uh, what I say to those guys is sometimes uh, be patient. Uh, eventually they're gonna go away and then the uh, activator will hear you. Uh, another thing that I will say is that um, uh, lately, uh, uh, even if you go now to the website and you see the spots, uh, there is probably at least five or six. And during the, the weekends, there could be like 40 or 50 people activating. So if you're missing a park, just go uh, chase somebody else and then come back when the uh, pileup or the big stations are gone. Um, you also have to deal with inexperienced operators, whether they are hunters or activators. And if you ever worked on Pileup, uh, I found this on the internet somewhere. And I love it because, uh, you know, everybody is trying to get in first. And then you have these people like uh, this one over here that uh, they don't really know what's going on. But they're just going to jump in because, uh, you know, they hear a Pileup. And in their mind is they, they need to work that station. And... Uh, these are some uh, uh, tips from the POTA site. It's like uh, you should look at your uh, POTA scheduler, like uh, for plan activations. Uh, follow social media for last minute activations. Um, one of my favorite ones is uh, go to the POTA.us site, um, which is the spotting network. Um, Every, every activator, as far as I know, they always spot there. Uh, the Parks on the Air, they have uh, a Slack. Uh, so I am a member of that. Um, Slack is kind of like an instant messaging type thing. Um, um, a lot of activators use that to announce uh, activations or what frequency they use. Um, you know, if somebody's from uh, New England, uh, there is a New England channel. Um, you can work the locals before the uh, before you get spotted. Uh, use phonetics uh, or go slow on CW. Uh, some of, like I said, some of those uh, activators they're brand new. They might be brand new CW operators. Uh, always observe the DX uh, code of contact. And uh, once you work them, uh, please spot them uh, because we want to help them and uh, and and you have to put the the k number k number the k stands for us ve for canadian and um they they kind of mimic the uh um the dx prefixes some of my tips before you do anything and you know you jump in there you always have to listen and if you think you've listened enough, uh, uh, my advice is to listen a little bit more. Um, learn where the POTA most 
common frequencies are. Sometimes uh, I just hang around those frequencies and when somebody comes up, uh, I get to work them before even they spot themselves or before the pileups start. Um, uh, another good thing that you can do is you can uh, scan uh, the like 40 and uh, 20 meters are the most common bands and frequencies uh, to see if anybody's there. Um, check all cluster, n not just the POTA spots. Because um, like sometimes I've seen uh, activators just uh, been um, spotted on some cluster that doesn't communicate with the uh, put aside and you know if you're not uh, paying attention you may lose um, a park uh, something that's rare and prepare to spend a lot of time uh, on your radio uh, I found last year my goal was to to see if I could get uh, um, to the top 10 I gotta tell you uh, it was almost like uh, I was working a second full-time job um, I, I spent a lot of time by the radio. Um, uh, I had cre I created a spreadsheet where I was tracking my QSOs confirmed versus pending versus what I need. Um, with 6,500 uh, parks, uh, I you know I, I don't remember all of them, so I have a spreadsheet. Uh, everything that's uh, confirmed, um, it's green. So I, I do like a quick. Uh, Excel search. If if it's white, it means uh, I need that park. If it's yellow, it means that uh, the uh, you know some other activator uh, I worked them, but it's pending. Uh, they haven't confirmed it, so it could be they got my call sign wrong. Uh, I mean, it could be a lot of things. Um, so it will be in your best advantage to rework that park. Uh, like I said, I use all available resources like web SDR, remote stations if I have to. And it's uh, and you will be amazed at what you, you know, how many parks you can get. I also use my uh, my radius features like uh, TX recording for sideband, CW, ready, filters, noise blankers. Um, I um, another thing is you need to learn to operate in different modes. Uh, even if you're proficient on CW and sideband, a lot of operators um, they use exclusively FT8, Ready, PSK, even satellites. And one of my uh, good friends uh, that I've met through the Parks on the Air, he activates uh, using uh, Slow Scan TV. So. Um, uh, there was uh, somebody out of, uh, I like to say Wisconsin, he only activates digital um, and he has done like Olivia and some of the not so common um, uh, digital uh, um, uh, modes. So um, if you want to, you know, get a lot of parks you 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 gotta you gotta know how to use that and you gotta know how to identify that and uh, and go chase them um now with ft8 and ft4 i use the jt alert uh because like uh if any of you have done any ft8s and you go on 20 meters in the middle of the day there's probably a couple of hundred stations there or whatever your computer can uh, uh decode and it I don't know about you, but for me, it's kind of hard to I, to find uh, where is the Poda Park or the Poda um, uh, call sign. But if um, with the JT alert, you can put it in uh, something that that says a wanted call sign, and then when the call sign gets decoded, uh, you put a like a bright yellow or a bright orange or whatever, some kind of color that you like, and it pops up. All you have to do is double click it and off you go chasing. Another important um, thing to do is do not set unrealistic goals. Like if you're gonna start today, don't say that in a year or two, you're gonna be in the top 10, that, that's unrealistic. Like when I started uh, way back in the national parks, I only wanted to do one contact and one activation just to get the awards from uh, all these certificates. 
from the league, right? I, I end up uh, doing a lot more because there was somebody in Massachusetts that he was activating and chasing. And uh, I've noticed that he was only like uh, 40 or 50 parks ahead of me. And I said like, hey, can I reach that guy? And then once I reach him, it's like, okay, can I, can I get further up? And I kind of did the same thing with the parks on the air. So the first thing it was like chasing that same person. Once I caught up to him, uh, then I chased the number one uh, activator, I mean, uh, chaser in Massachusetts. Then I went to New England. And then from there, I was uh, within striking distance to get in the top 15 and eventually to top 10. It took me about three or four years to uh, to do that. So, uh, you know, you got to go a little bit at a time. Otherwise, you're going to get discouraged. And uh, don't get frustrated. Uh, it's a hobby. Please have fun. That's what you're doing that. Staying active and having fun. And um, always be patient. Uh, there are a lot of times that there were some rare ones that, uh, you know, um, the activator, uh, they have sometimes limited time. They may be do 10, 15 or 20 contacts. And then they're going to turn off the radio and go somewhere else or pack it for the day. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is even the rare ones, there will be some other activator that will eventually want to activate that park. So even if you miss something or you couldn't get into it in time or there was a big pileup, just be patient. Eventually somebody else will get in there and act activate it and you probably get it. And be persistent. Uh, my friend W0YS, from Minnesota, um, he has activated a lot of parks, and uh, I gotta tell you, I, I will call him up. Even uh, you know, he usually works every single station in the pileup until he calls uh, anyone else, and nobody responds. And even if I get one one, I think somebody one time gave me one one on sideband. It doesn't matter <laughs> to me. The only thing is, uh, hey, there is another unique park that uh, I can add on my total and that's all I care. And always never give up. I think that's uh, kind of like a life uh, lesson. Uh, another thing is study your activators. Um, I have become friends with them. I know some of them, what time, band, mode they like to operate, whether they do multi-park, single park, quick activations, uh, learn to accommodate everyone, uh, you know, how they work the pileups, the rhythm that they work, the cues, um, develop uh, personal relationships. Um, I have a lot of activators that before they go, um, before they activate, they send me a list of the parks that they're going to activate. If I need anything, uh, I tell them, hey, I need this. And then when just before they call CQ, they send me a text with the frequency, then I go in, I get the park uh, before anyone else. So that's a very important uh, tip here. Uh, a lot of activators, they use Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. So uh, go to those sites and you know be part of the program. Um, and I guess I've talked about Slack and the Facebook and stuff like that. So now I'm going to go to activating uh, parks. Like I said, I activated about uh, 18, 18 parks, something like that. So uh, my, my setup is extremely, extremely simple. Uh, this is my car here, the black one. Uh, this is my wife's car. Uh, this is up on uh, Wachusett. This is on um, Well State Park um, in Sturbridge. It's about a couple of miles down the street from my house and basically what i use is um uh if you guys know what the wolf river coil is um right now uh, on this uh, picture i have uh, this is 20 meters i use um, um a quarter wave uh, whip um, i use the same radio that i'm hunting this is the 7300 and the battery is down here and i use a computer with uh a login software to log. Uh, this one is, I like to say, Brimfield uh, State Forest. 
So, uh, so basically, to activate a park, you need a transceiver. It doesn't have to be a 7300, or it doesn't have to be a $1,500 radio. Uh, you can buy a QRP radio uh, for Morse code, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks. You need an antenna, like uh, you can have a wire antenna, you can have a vertical, like uh, you can have a, a hemp stick for 30 bucks. Um, well, you need to log, make sure you have a, because you are an activator, uh, you need to submit a log. So um, you need to log, you need to have a vehicle to get there, unless you have some good friends or family members. You need to know the program rules, like, uh, um, in order to activate a park, you need to be within the park uh, um, perimeter, I guess. And you need to know whether the park is open, what time is open, if they allow you to operate, you know, all that stuff, or whether you need a permit. You need uh, to plan your activation. You need to know the park rules and always uh, worry about safety. Uh, safety, it's not just, uh, you know, not to get electrocuted in case there is some lines on top of uh, of your antenna and stuff like that. Like uh, the other day, one of the female activators, I heard uh, she was uh, she would get she was getting stalked. So always be aware of uh, your surroundings, uh, people, because sometimes you could be all by yourself there. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy people out. All right, I guess that's uh, that's uh, the program. Uh, let me uh, stop here. My my presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll be more than happy to take any of them. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. It's and thank you. It's just been very interesting to me. Um, I, I'm really going to get interested in participating in this. I wonder. If you would share with us, you don't have to, you may not want to, but um, how would you rank the modes in terms of your your contacts, your QSOs on POTA? I mean, you mentioned RIDI and CW and single sideband and FT8. Is it, can you, are you willing to rank the, the ease um, of contacts or the numbers, the share that you were able to make QSOs? Um, well, uh, let me see. I am a uh, I just started CW about maybe a year and a half ago, so I cannot really give you good statistics on that. Okay. However, however, what I will say is that ninety percent of the activators are even higher. They activate on uh, sideband. And then everything else uh, follows that. Like uh, I will go like 90% uh, sideband. I'll say about 5% CW and then everything else. Mm. Um, maybe digital might be a little bit more than that. But um, uh, the reason that I, I got my feet wet and I relearned the code uh, good enough to make contacts is because I've noticed there were, um, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one is uh, there are some uh, very big time activators, like, uh, you know, the guy that uh, has the most activations in the parks on the air, uh, at least 90% of his uh, activations are in CW. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to get a crack uh, at top 10, with a very small station, I I had to learn CW. So that was the, the reason why I, I use uh, Morse code. It's more efficient. You can get through pileups easier. You can get, even when conditions are really bad and you cannot hear, like uh, on voice, I cannot hear somebody on 99.9%, .9 I can work them on Morse code and I get um, very good signals. I have a lot of appreciation for single sideband looking at your score, your standings on POTA, though. That's pretty good, Demetrius. So, anyway, thank you for your comments. Brian, you were going to ask a question. Yes, uh, sorry, rookie here. 
What is the uh, the criteria, parameters, definition of a park? Are we talking national parks, state parks, town parks? Yep. Um, town forest, Fenway Park. What exactly is the parameters of a park? I would love to activate from Fenway Park, but uh, it's not part of the uh, program. So. Uh, there are a lot of programs, right? Uh, Parks on the Air, it's just one program. Um, there is like, uh, you probably heard uh, Summits on the Air. You heard um, the Worldwide Flora, Islands on the Air. I mean, I can go on and on with uh, different types of uh, programs. So the POTA, the Parks on the Air, um, I guess uh, there is a committee that they have decided which parks uh, they're going to be part of the program. Primarily, it's mostly national parks and state parks, national historic sites. I think what I've heard is they took the, the list from the ARRL when they did the National Parks on the Air, uh, which was about eight or 900 uh, parks. And then from there, they added all the state parks. Now, if you want to activate a park in this program, the best thing to do is go to their website and, you know, you can choose your state and then um, you start looking uh, either at the map because, um, uh, you know, if you say I live in Charlton, um, it will have like what's the closest park uh, from where you live. And then you start, you know, from the closest park and you keep uh, expanding. Or you can go and uh, do a search for Massachusetts and you get like about a couple hundred parks. And then if you click on each park, it tells you where the park is, like uh, it has some uh, GPS coordinates. And, and from there you can use um, um, like a Massachusetts, uh, um, the MassGOV site, uh, where the address of the park is to find more additional information. There, but there it, are a bunch of local parks or parks and I know Yeah, but it the the what I'm trying to say is it's not every park, it's not every state park and it's not every town park. It, in order to 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 be part of the parks on the air program, the park has to be active on that program. But there are a lot of local parks. That yes. Have. There's a park in, in Groton along the uh, Nashua River that people have activated. And I don't know if it's a park or a state forest or exactly what it is, but it's only a couple of miles from here. So is it on the rail trail? Uh, it, I believe it's close to the rail trail if it's not on the rail trail. So hey, Gary, which one are these? If you go to the parks on the air site, you can pull up maps and they will show you all of the different activations that have taken place. Yeah, I, I, I'm not like a big time activator and I didn't want to uh, do a, um, give a speech on um, something that I haven't really done a lot. But um, um, I think what Bruce said is uh, correct. Uh, you, if you go to the photo site, you click maps it will ask you, do can I can I see where you're located? You say yes, and then once they have your location, it will give you it will give you some yellow dots, and I'll take it you're familiar with uh, where you live and where the do the dots are. And then once you click on the dot, it gives you the name of the park. You click in the name of the park, it will give you a little more information, and then from there you can. You can find the address, how to get there. Um, you can Google the park name on in Google, and you get hours of operations. If uh, if they have park rangers, a phone number that you can call them. I, I guess a follow up question: Can you can you hunt a park if there's nobody present at the park activating it? No. Somebody has to be there. You got to talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can. Um, you just go there. I, I mean, you got to use uh, common sense. Um, I don't have any of that yet. 
<laughs> so I go to my local park and uh, I've seen the rangers there. They never came and asked me a question at all. Um, but I've heard um, in occasions, uh, not in my local park, but I have heard uh, in some parks, either the police or the park ranger goes, ask the questions. And if they don't like it, they tell you, sorry, you cannot do that. Then, you know, if they tell you you cannot do this, you pack up and leave. Or you can ask them, uh, what do I need to do? And they may tell you those are the rules. You may need a special permit. I mean, certain sites are what they call sensitive sites. Like if you want to, like uh, the the Statue, the Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, that's a sensitive site. You cannot just go off the boat and set up a, a station like uh, you, you're going to get, you're probably going to get arrested. They don't care if you're a ham radio operator or whatever. You, there is a process. You need to apply for a license to operate. You may, you may or may not uh, pay fees. And once they give you the, permi the permission, then you can go set up. Uh, but not all sites are the same. And not all sites have uh, park rangers. So what I'm saying, using common sense, um, you know, if, if you go on the website, it says that there is no ranger. You know, some parks are wide open. People go to jog or, you know, walk the dogs or whatever. I mean, nobody will ask you anything. But if the police shows up and they want to know why you're there, uh, you better have your license. You better have your elevator speech, like why you're there, what you do. Most of the times they're friendly. But, you know, if they don't like you and they tell you you got to pack up, you got to pack up. You cannot argue with them. Bill. Bill has a question. Bill? I wonder if you know that both the National Park Service and the Massachusetts State Parks offer free permits for people 65 and older so they don't have to pay the entrance fee or parking tax. Oh, okay, can can you repeat that? I I, I, I had a hard time hearing it. So my voice is a little weak. Uh, both the National Park Service and the Massachusetts State Parks will give you a free pass if you're over 65. Yes. And you don't have to pay for parking or the entrance fee. Yes, that is correct. And um, I, I'm not 65 yet, but uh, when I get 65, I will definitely take advantage of that. Or you can buy the uh, national, uh, I mean, if some people are RVers and they go all over the place, uh, some of them, they buy the uh, a ticket. Uh, I don't know, it used to be $100 or something like that. And they can enter any national park all year long for $100. Uh, I think Massachusetts has simi something similar for all state parks. Some of the local activators, they buy that. And then all you have to do is show that and you've got all the amenities available to you. Uh, John, go ahead. You have a question. Yeah, if you are a veteran and you have a veteran ID card, you can go to any national park for absolutely free. And it's uh, many uh, state parks honor it as well. Not all. All right, any other questions for Demetrius? Demetrius, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, I. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I forgot one thing. I didn't. Um, Phil asked me to talk about the Long Island CW Club. So if I can give a little plug, I'll uh, I'll appreciate that. Just give me one. Uh, where's my? Okay, there we go. So all I'm gonna say is the Long Island CW Club was created um, as. Um, a way to give back to the community. And uh, there were two, um, 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 Howard and uh, Rich, uh, they've noticed that uh, on the local field days, that they were the only two CW operators. 
So they tried to get uh, four or five Long Island clubs to teach people how to learn CW. Since then, that, that, that was about five or six years ago, uh, the, the club has, um, um, has exploded. Let me go to home here. And uh, we are an online club and we teach uh, basically Morse code. Right now we have over 2,500 members, all 50 states, 41 countries, and it's at least 75 classes. Now it, it's not like uh, the CW Academy or any of those programs. This is like a club, kind of like what we, what you guys have here. Uh, besides the CW classes, they have uh, forums, uh, like in the beginning of the uh, of the uh, of the presentation. Uh, um, uh, Bruce said that I I moderate the Portable Operations Forum. So we have lots of forums and operations almost every night. And we have beginners class, intermediate, advanced CW classes. And also we have a kids program. And uh, during COVID, uh, that's when the kids program uh, started as uh, a way to keep uh, kids um, busy, uh, you know, because they didn't have school. That's how my daughter got, uh, you know, I, I was plugging uh, him radio for two, three years prior to that, she was not really interested. But once uh, she, she became a member of the club and um, um, she had some other peers and learned CW, uh, actually she knew how to send code and copy code before she was uh, a licensed ham. And within two years, uh, she became an extra. Um, actually, she, she became an extra when she was 12 years old. Um, so anyway, um, that's just, uh, a little plug. If anybody, um, uh, I think Phil told me that, uh, a lot of your members are, uh, CW experts, but if anybody wants to join the club, um, you can click membership, uh, fill in the information. And then within, uh, 48 hours or so, uh, Howard, uh, the president, class president and, one of the uh, the people, the co-founders, will reach out to you and tell you what you need to do. And uh, and basically that's it. Thank you. Any further questions for Demetrius? Let us know maybe tomorrow. How do they uh, get you, Demetrius? If they have a question, this always happens to me. As soon as the presentation is over, I have a qu question and. I hit myself on the back of my head and said, I should have asked that question. How do people get a hold of you if they uh, if they have a question uh, later? I am good on QRZ. And uh, if you do anyone D at uh, ARRL.net, um, then I will get the question and respond back. And Demetrius's name and call sign will be on the uh, announcement for the club meeting this month. So um, you can go to get his call sign, go to qrz.com and track him down if you have to. Thank you again, Demetrius. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. And uh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. You're welcome. Anyone have anything further for tonight's meeting? Speak up. If I don't hear anything, I'll officially close the meeting and uh, look forward to seeing everyone for our special meeting in April where they will elect new officers. That's it. Good night. Good night.